good morning everybody hopefully you can uh, hear me and um Thanks ever so much for joining the webinar today. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard Bates. I'm Sales Director for EBS. Um, and for those that don't know us as a business, uh, we're Electronic Business Systems, abbreviated to EBS. Uh, we've been established for over 40 years and we partner with SenseNet. Um, just a little bit about us. So EBS uh, as a company, uh, we're based just outside of Birmingham near Spaghetti Junction. Uh, we've got a national reach and we specialise in IT software, hardware and security solutions. So just before we get started, uh, from a housekeeping point of view, uh, we're recording this session and we'll make it available afterwards. Uh, so if you do want to share it with colleagues, you're more than welcome to. Um, but enough about EBS, I'll pass you over to uh, SenseNet Senior Sales Engineer Giles uh, to talk to you and demonstrate their web filtering and CASB product. Brilliant, thank you Richard, very kind introduction there. So morning all, thank you very much for attending. Uh, as Richard said, my name is Giles Rayside. I'm one of the senior sales engineers here at Sensinet. And today I'll be taking you through part of our platform, which is traditional web security and cloud application security. Just a bit about Sensinet. We're a UK cybersecurity vendor, been going 10 plus years and really excited to be partnering with the guys at EBS. So just going to quickly share my screen. Richard, if you'd be very kind and just let me know once that's come through. A little yep, nod. You can see Brilliant. that. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, so just very quickly, just going to sort of talk you through our platform. Very simply, we're a cloud-based um, environment. All the configuration, management, and day-to-day -day reporting is done via our platform. And we do two, two elements we're going to talk about today is traditional web security and cloud application security. So from a management point of view, when you log into our platform, we can see what we're licensed up, to, up at the top. And very quickly, you can see some information going from the dashboard. And this is really key for anyone that's using our platform. Very simply, you can see what's going on. If we just start off with how we capture this traffic. We have a number of agents, Windows agents, Mac agents, Chromebook agents, and we have our software gateway. And they basically capture all the traffic where users user's going to. And if we think about what web security is, fundamentally web security is binary. It's allow access or block access based on URLs that have been classified. And SenseNet, we've got 501 URL classifications, sorry, categories, and very, very simple to create policies, which we'll show you towards the end. But what's quite nice about the home dashboard is you can quickly drill down to see that I've had a spike of block traffic. So I can click on this and it's going to drill down to that activity report, really giving you visibility of what's going on. And if I quickly just come across here, click on this particular record here, you can see very simply the user identity. It's my work account, my MAC address, the IP address, and that full URL path of the URL that I try to go to. So just to kind of show you what that looks like, if I try and go to gun.com, I've got a policy in my tenant that says, sorry, Giles, you can't go to guns.com. And again, very quickly, you can see the URL path, the full user identity, information about my device that I'm on, the category, weapons, and the rule that blocked. So just to kind of show you how simple it is. Again, this is all customizable. The guys at EBS can make this look however you like. It's just HTML, so you can make it as pretty, company logos, et cetera, as need be. So following on from that, web security is binary. It's allow access or block access to applications or sites in your environment. And fundamentally, you do need web security. You need policies in place that says X users, that could be your Active Directory identity, for example, that says sales engineers or sales people can't go to X, Y, Z, phishing sites, malware sites, great security practice. And also we do the ability of MIME type and malware scannings. So we can stop users downloading files they shouldn't be, i.e. no non-IT user should be downloading installers or executables and scripts and all those kind of things. As well as if you go to a site that's um, got some harmful malware, again, our platform can download, uh, sorry, can block that and stop users downloading that malicious content. But one of the problems you might start encountering with web security is the fact, because it's binary, you have to give full access or no access so when, as we're starting this cloud transformation, users are starting to use services such as OneDrive or Box or you know, all those kind of LinkedIn, Salesforce applications out there. But another issue you potentially get is unfortunately, not every URL actually tells you what's going on. So sometimes you can find situations where you're looking at an application, you're not 100% sure what's going on. 
So, for example, that's one of my children's games that they're playing. Um, that's Teams traffic. For these examples on my dashboard are quite simple to spot. But when you've got lots of traffic going through and lots of users going to sites that you're not, not sure of, it can be quite tricky. So this is where we talk about cloud application security. And cloud application security very simply sits on top of SenseNet's web security. And what cloud application security can give you is an understanding of what applications have been used in your environment. What I mean by that is we often hear this term called um, shadow IT. And here what I've basically just done on our home dashboard is identified 20, the top 25 applications that I've used in my environment. And we have this concept called sanctioned applications and unsanctioned applications. So here at SenseNet, we're an O365 house. You'll see my team's traffic. You'll see me accessing uh, Outlook for Business and OneDrive and all those great tools that Microsoft provide us. I'm often on LinkedIn sharing the SenseNet uh, story and messaging uh, on my professional network. And as being part of a sales engineer, I have to fill in the sales, uh, Salesforce updates, etc. So these were what we would consider to be sanctioned applications. But if we look at this list, we can start scrolling down and seeing certain applications here, such as WeTransfer, we might not have as a sanctioned application. Some IT administrators might not be aware that this application is being used. And yes, you can absolutely see some of this information within web security logs that a user has gone to WeTransfer. But unfortunately, web security solutions aren't going to tell you what that user's performed in that application. So what do I mean by that? Again, all our application logs and, and our web logs and chart based logs in the platform are dynamic. I can click on WeTransfer and it's going to drill down into the activity log, building that report based on that filter. And as we can see here, we can see that again, myself, I've gone to the cloud storage application WeTransfer and I've sent a file. If I expand this record, we are then going to pick out the information that you've entered in. And that's fundamentally one of the key differences between web security and CASB. CASB will capture the post of the information that you put into that application is where web security is just looking at the URL path. And unfortunately, applications don't write in or aren't written in a way where they will put that information in there. So that's where CASB really comes on. So I, for example, sent a test message to another test account so showing off the SenseNet CASB uh, for this particular demonstration. So you can see that posted message. If I scroll up, where it says attached a file, I'll expand that record and I can then capture the file name that was sent via WeTransfer. So if we take a step back as an administrator on our platform, we understand that we can block WeTransfer and other applications via traditional web security. But sometimes it's quite tricky to understand that or more importantly, see what's being logged. Come down to the, the top cloud application name on the dashboard, Within four clicks, I've identified potentially an unsanctioned application such as WeTransfer. And again, WeTransfer is a great application from a user. It means I can send up to two gig of unstructured data to any email address in the world free of charge. I just need an account with them. I don't need to be a paid for account, which is brilliant for an, uh, a user sending data around. Not so great for an IT administrator for that exact reason. Not knowing where data is being sent to is quite key nowadays. And what's brilliant with the SenseNet platform, as I've just shown you, is within four clicks, I've identified an unsanctioned application. Second click, who is that user that's performed these actions in the application? Third, where did that user send this data to? And fourth, what was that data? So very quickly, with our capabilities, we give you this kind of understanding of that shadow IT, showing you what's possible, showing you what's being used in this environment, and then very quickly, we can create policies to understand what's going on. Again, this is just from the home dashboard. We've got full analytics there. You can go and create reports and, and create policies within the rule base to show what's going on. So if we quickly jump into the rule base, just to give you a very simple overview of what the rule base looks like. At SenseNet, we've made extremely um, cautious effort or conscious effort, sorry, to understand that administrators time is, 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 is precious and having a solution like ours that's easy to understand and easy to administer um, it is a great thing for, for organizations to have on board. So if we're looking at a rule here, very simply, there are three columns. Conditions. 
Now, I touched on earlier, we can tie into Microsoft's Active Directory, whether that's on-prem, whether that's a hybrid, or whether you're Azure AD site. We can use your AD groups or um, usernames, for example, to create policies. We can leave them as time-based policies, and we can also create policies based on the operating system or the browser that you are. So, for example, let's pretend that there was a current vulnerability in a certain version of Chrome. Well, I can build a policy that says if I see this version of Chrome, then I can say, for example, block traffic or redirect to the update site so you can get that latest update. Or you might just be in a situation where you say, actually, we just want to allow Chrome and Edge. We don't want Firefox and other browsers. And it's very simple to use the browser type function to do that. Next is the destination. So web security categories, I touched on we've got 501 to choose from. This is the destination. Very simply, I can just click on this, show you what's currently selected within this rule by a simple click of a button. And look, any URL that our platforms deem to be uh, malicious or phishing or spam or any of these types of uh, URLs that have been classified in this, then this policy is going to block it based on that action. But we've got lots of little handy things to help you out, such as lookup tools. For example, if I was unsure what Facebook.com was classified as, I can see it's social networking and I can then choose to add this into this policy if I deemed. Last is kind of the actions. Well, what can we do? Obviously, we can allow traffic. So I can go to uh, Google.com and I can allow that traffic very simply. But we have concept of warm pages. So warm pages is quite useful in our environment. It's another way of presenting uh, information to a user to say, actually, are you sure you need to go to that site? If you do, by all means, you can click continue. You can have 30 minutes of access, for example. Um, and then after 30 minutes, it will be rewarning you to say, should you still be going to that site? Again, we can log all the access that the users have gone to. Other types of actions we've got is the block page that I mentioned. One of the functions and features that customers do like is they have the ability to have a function called unblock request. It allows the user to submit a reason why they need access to it. And then the admins will receive a message from our platform to say, Giles, for example, wants to go to this particular URL. Shall we allow it? So you've got that kind of granularity and flexibility from an administration point of view. We also have the ability to do quota time. So, for example, if you've got a policy or an organization that says, yep, we have no problem with you going to social networking sites, but we would like to restrict it for an hour a day. And absolutely, you can set up quota time that says after an hour, that access is then blocked to those sites. Very simply, very easy to administer. And last but not least, we have the ability to kind of do a redirect. So, for example, I touched on earlier that Sensenet's um, cloud sharing application by choice is Microsoft's OneDrive. So I could have a policy that said, if, for example, the source site you're trying to go to is box.com, just redirect it to OneDrive, ensuring that your users are, are using the corporate standard. So from a web security rule, very simple. You're basically looking at who you are, where you're going to, and whether you're allowed access. And depending on that, we can display all sorts of different block pages or warm pages. And again, that can be customized. So it's very simple to create policies in our platform. From a cloud application point of view, we give users access to a thousand plus applications. And this is always growing. And one of the lovely things about Sentinet is if there's a new application that you're currently using that isn't in our application catalog, then we will do uh, our best to put that application free of charge within our application catalog within 72 hours, which then means you can start reporting on it and controlling it if need be. But let me tell you what I mean by controlling applications and actions. When SenseNet fingerprints an application, we then look at the whole application from a browser's point of view and understand these actions. And then we put them into an application class. So here I've just expanded cloud storage. And if I scroll down to an application we've all probably heard of, dropbox.com, you can then see the type of actions that we've added. So what do I mean by actions? So looking at this, things like attempt to log in as an action. Scrolling further down, we've got things like comment the file, create a file, etc. These are the actions that we understand. And as you can imagine, some applications in our application catalog have more actions that we understand due to complexity of that application. And some like we transfer, well, there's only four because you can only send, upload, download and sign into that application. What it is giving you is that visibility. And very simply, we then apply what we call a base risk level to the action. So as you can see, logging into Dropbox is a low risk action. That's fundamentally because you don't really do much just logging into it. 
but you can adjust this base risk level. You might want to say actually logging into this particular action's high risk. And from a SenseNet's point of view, anything that we've deemed as high risk is potentially data being lost. So let me explain that in a bit more detail. High risk actions from SenseNet could be things like you uploading data from your, lap, your device up to that application. It might be things such as you sharing data from that application, or more importantly, potentially deleting data from that application. So these are marked as high risk actions in the first place. Again, you can choose this. In essence, anything that's a high risk action is potentially data being uploaded to an application that you're not aware of or data being deleted from the application. And what's really nice is you can choose to log it, ignore it or capture some of those results. But in essence, SenseNet gives you an understanding of what actions are performed in applications. We put that base risk level next to it and the app catalog is constantly growing and it stands well over a thousand plus applications. So what does that mean in real terms? So obviously I showed you on the home page, you've got the ability to capture this information. You can see all these applications that I've been using, Teams traffic, we transfer, box uploads, etc. But when it comes to a policy enforcement, exactly the same place as web security, you can then start creating simple applications, or sorry, simple rules to perform certain tasks. So for example, one of the use cases I talk to my customers about, and it kind of um, echoes with them, is we think about traditional web security. Remember what I said, it's binary, it's URLs. It's either allow full access or deny full access. But it can't really differentiate between certain access. And what I mean by that, we take Outlook or OneDrive. We've got obviously our corporate accounts, sensenet.com, for example, but I also have my personal accounts. I've got my own 0365 tenant. Web security can't differentiate between the two, but I can have a very simple CASB rule, for example, that can block access to my personal 0365 environment, but allow my corporate one. And it's quite a simple thing. So let me just show you that. I'm gonna try and log into my 0365 environment, and I'm gonna log into with one of my personal accounts. I nearly got the wrong one there, that would have backfired on me. Um, so I'm going to log in, valid username, valid credentials, but because I've got a CASB rule that says, sorry, you can't log in to your sense, uh, uh, non sensenet account, we've got a nice little block page. So again, I can customize this, I can do whatever I want. But just to kind of show you that it all works fine, I can log in with my sensenet account, and it will allow me to log in and see uh, my 0365 environment and all that. And that's a very simple rule. I won't go into too much details, but effectively, I have the ability to understand application actions. You know, I showed you in the application catalog. Well, this particular one I'm showing you, uh, sorry, I'm looking for is the Microsoft Authentication. Attempt to log in. And if it doesn't match a, a keyword category that I've got with my email domain in it, then it's going to block it. So very simply, we can create rules based on who you are, where you're trying to go to from an application point or an action point of view, and then have the ability to block it. Very simple. Another kind of rule that we've got in, uh, in place, again, very simple, is the ability to stop users downloading certain things. So this particular rule, I'm basically saying, if it's Outlook for Business, and I see an action that says, download of an email attachment, if I trigger this rule, it's gonna block it. So very simply, I can come down to my demo folder, I can load it up this email and if I want to potentially download this attachment, then no, because I've triggered that rule. So CASB gives you an understanding of what actions and applications are being used in the environment, but very simply, you can uh, build policies to basically say what a user can and can't do. And absolutely, granularity, and uh, we can go a step further. I can create a rule very simply based on a generic action. So all these applications we've got on our platform, I can do a simple search for the, the word file and I'm selecting download a file and upload a file. Very simply, this rule is now transformed to any user trying to perform the action of upload or download to any of those thousand plus applications we've got in our environment. It's going to deny it. So potentially it will stop me uploading to G Drive, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we transfer, Fox send, all these great applications that users sometimes get access to uh, because we haven't locked them down correctly. You can absolutely block access to them. 
And one of the really great things about SenseNet with our unique platform is we can absolutely integrate both web security and CASB rules within or functions, sorry, within the same rule base. So I can do a quick search for web-based categories, web-based email categories. So that's Outlook, Outlook for Business, Gmail, Hotmail, et cetera. If that is the destination, I can still log into my Gmail. If Richard sends me an email from his Gmail account into my Gmail account, I can still open it. I can still respond to it. But if I try and download or upload something to him, then it's going to get blocked by this rule. So it gives you great granularity around what you do and don't want users to do. But last but not least, remember I said every single action would give you a base risk level. And anything that's deemed higher or above is effectively data going out of your environment. Well, then we can do it on a risk level as well. Basically, this rule would just stop users uploading data to applications that we understand in your environment. Obviously, if they have access, there'll be a rule above it. So hopefully you can see with SenseNet's rule base, it's very simple to understand and create rules based on access to applications that you want your users to have. And when we tie this into our reporting capability, you can then start seeing the power. Now, there's two types of reports out on the platform uh, for SenseNet. You've got your traditional chart based reports. So, for example, who's the top block users in my environment? And again, I can span that over the last week, month, et cetera. I can see the top users. And what's really nice is I can drill down into this environment. I can click on that and it's going to drill down into the activity report and show you every single URL that I went to. Again, just to kind of show you earlier. I click on the eye icon. It's going to reconfirm who I am or who the user was, sorry, in this case, the URL that they're going to, which rule. What's great about the application um, activity reports is I can just use any kind of filtering. I can specify the time frame and I can say, right, have I blocked any malware, any viruses, for example? And I can just select that and run that report. Once I've got that data set, I can then do a couple of things. I can download this as a CSV file straight away or I can save it as a report. And once I save it as a report, then save it and view it anytime I want under our saved report access. But what's even better is I can then come to the scheduling option and then I can say, right, I would like to see that daily report on the demo AV. I would like that as a CSV and I'm going to send it to this user. And I'm going to send it to that user and I'm going to send it to that user. And what's great is once I hit add, it will only send me that report once a day at midday if traffic's in there. If it hasn't triggered the report, it won't fill up my inbox. And that's really key with our platform. What I've just shown you there on web security is exactly how it works on CASB and our other modules on the platform, making it really easy and simple to administer and understand and get the value out of the platform. If I show you the next type of reporting, we spoke on CASB. CASB is going to give you that additional value, that more granular information about what's going on. So I showed you this report earlier very simply shows me those top applications uh, that have been used in my environment. And again, I can drill down into it. But one of the key reports um, a lot of our customers like is this particular one. It shows you the applications with those high risk actions. So, for example, we can see that I sent a file by WeTransfer, but also there's been uploads to Box.com, Dropbox.com. And again, if I want to understand who's been doing that, again, I can click on that and it's going to drill down into the activity report and kind of show you what's going on. And again, I can expand that. I can see what's going on. And we can see that I shared um, our kind of product data sheet about uh, CASB on this particular environment. And again, I can see what's going on. It makes it super simple. And like web security, I can save this as a report and I can schedule it. And what's really nice about the platform is all our chart-based reports we can choose, pick and match what we want. And then we can create something called a combined chart report, which is really nice for those kind of administrators uh, or those kind of board level reporting uh, capability that you might need. What I'm able to do is pick all of those chart based reports or potentially the ones that are key to me and place them in a single report. So here I've got uh, a combined chart report with a mixture of web security and CASB information. So we can see the top allowed domains that I've been allowed to go to the top block domains, sites that I've not been able to go to. What are the top application classes? So from a web, web security category. Scrolling down, now we're look, looking at the CASB applications. 
again, all of these dynamic, if there's something in here that I, I want to investigate in more detail, I can just click on it and it's going to bring up that activity report and show me what's going on. Time the user spent on domains, etc. Top users in the environment, and therefore I can build it how I want. And the really nice thing about this is, again, I can schedule it in exactly the same way. Come down and say, actually, at the end of every week, I would like to see. Oh, I've lost it. Being blind. This is the problem when you don't tidy up your environment. There we go. Uh, have it as a PDF, and again, exactly the same method. I can send it. And it's going to send this report once a week with all that information in a PDF and it will break it down to what users have been doing. But again, if we jump back to the activity reports for cloud application security, again, some of the nice things you can do, you can drill down to say, actually, I'm interested in a specific application. So I can just click on cloud application and the application I'm interested in, for example, is LinkedIn. So it's a social networking application, even though it is a business tool. Click on LinkedIn and I might want to just show actually I'm only interested in posted information. So have I posted a, a post in, in LinkedIn? Hit run. And again, it's going to bring out that information that this is backfired because I clearly haven't done any uh, work on LinkedIn in the last week. So let's run that again with the last month. Hey, I've saved my bacon. So here you can see that I did a post. And again, I can expand that and it will show you the post that I did on LinkedIn. If you think about all those applications in our application catalog, I can pretty much drill down. So from a business tool, understanding where users are going, understanding if the sanctioned and unsanctioned apps are being used, platform will show you this. If there's potentially an issue that HR needs to get into, it's far more granular reporting than just traditional web security and URL capability. And with our ability to schedule these reports on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly basis, you set them up once, we can absolutely, uh, absolutely get that data sense of someone's e inbox and they can click on it and get that report. So look, this is kind of a, a quick overview of what SenseNet looks like. Um, the ability to understand where users are going to, the ability to control what they have access to. We can do that with that traditional web security that absolutely need it, have users and policies in place that says X user can't go to Y destination. Once they can get to a wide destination, are they allowed to download certain MIME types? Should they be able to download any malware content? No, because the platform will stop it. And on top of it, with CASB on top, it will show you what applications users have physically been using. And at which point you can build up a picture to say, right, does our organization want to allow access to certain applications? If you're an O365 house, should we be using applications like WeTransfer? Well, it's got that visibility, but more importantly, with that rule base that I've shown you, very easy, conditions match actions, is X user allowed to go to set application and perform actions? And very quickly, you can then start getting control of what your users are doing from a security point of view, but also a data compliance point of view. Are they using the cloud applications that we are paying for, sanctioned to use, et cetera? So hopefully that gives you a good insight to what SenseNet does from a web security and CASB point of view. We obviously have other modules on the platform and we're more than happy to talk about those at another session. But I guess now would be a great time to open up to see if there's any questions. Richard, is there any questions that have come through on the, uh, the channel at all? Brilliant stuff. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. Obviously, if there's any more questions that anybody would like to ask, just feel free to use the chat uh, and uh, we'll we'll pick through them. Um, one of the initial questions is obviously there's, there's a move to cloud um, and um, is the platform compatible with uh, VDI environments, so virtual desktops? Yeah, great question. I guess we've all kind of moved away from that office environment. You know, before this uh, unfortunate pandemic that we've all had to go through, a lot of users were in the in the office and they weren't kind of, uh, you know, sat in that single location. So to answer the question very quickly, and I'll try not to waffle, yes, absolutely. Our platform supports VDI environments, both from our traditional gateway, but also from our, our agent that can sit on a Windows environment. It's completely tamper proof, so they can't stop it. You can't get pie past it. But one of the great things about the agent is it absolutely understands every single user that's locked into that VDI environment. So it can determine whether it's Richard going to Facebook or Giles going to Dropbox. So yes, absolutely every VDI environment is supported regardless if that's via our gateway or via our Windows agent. Brilliant. And is that similar for mobile devices? 
Absolutely, we can um, support mobile devices and we can traverse, as long as that traffic traverses through our um, our gateway, we can prov uh, provide these exact um, exact filtering capabilities that I've shown you both from a web security point of view and a CASB point of view. One of the great things is because we don't charge for our agents, a lot of our customers like the fact that they can say, oh, I've got a guest Wi-Fi network here. I've got no protection. They can put one of our gateways in transparent mode. It will give them a nice little splash page. But more importantly, it's stopping users that are coming into their guest network going to organize, uh, sorry, to destinations they shouldn't be going to, you know, providing that duty of care responsibility very simple to do but also they do it on their corporate wi-fi as well we can absolutely help with that brilliant stuff and um, i think you mentioned it there's another question to come through but um uh, malware and and sort of protection and scanning i mean that's sort of traditionally what web filtering is or yeah. was it, it, absolutely can you expand on that a little bit yeah no worries so i guess it's, it's two pro uh, two sides to this from a from a, a url classification the engine's constantly looking at sites urls applications and if one of those sites has got any malicious content on it instantly it is changed from for example social networking to one of the malicious categories in that rule i showed you so that's constantly happening but also you have the option to um by our malware scanning uh, capability that whenever you download a, a page or a file, for example, that's going to run through the malware engine and have the ability to stop that um, malicious content entering uh, your environment or, or coming into your PC. So absolutely is an option on the platform. Brilliant. It's a good consideration as well, isn't it? I mean, email is often focused upon, but obviously it's just another very easy way for absolutely. To, to get malware in. D defense in depth you know you can never have enough protection so uh, yeah we absolutely offer that uh, as a, a, a feature on the platform brilliant um last question um unless there's obviously any more that come in while you're answering this one but uh, you touched upon linkedin um facebook obviously from a marketing point of view you know some companies will obviously flat right block social media um marketing department might need access to it can you control kind of what's done in Facebook, uh, you know, in terms of those users that do need access to it? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, yeah, with web security, you can absolutely have policies that says actually marketing can go to Facebook, uh, but sales can't. So you've got that to traditional can get it out of there, uh, granular control. But when we put CASB on top of it, we can then say, actually, marketing, you can like a post uh, and, and comment on a post, for example, but you can't send a, a Facebook message or you can't upload a video or upload a photo. And um, so absolutely, all those application actions that we understand across the thousand plus applications we have, you can then create policies based on for example, your Active Directory identity, sales, markets, and technical, for example, and then what you are able to do in those applications. So one that we see quite often is um, certainly in some of the environments is I touched on WeTransfer. Some organizations have to receive documentation via that because it's their partner's um, uh, solution of choice. But we can say, actually, you can download, but you can't upload via WeTransfer. You have to send out via our supported cloud sharing platform. So it really gives administrators the ability to regain control of what cloud applications are being used. Because as you well know, users are great at finding ways to get around security solutions. And if there's a free application to make their life a little bit easier, they tend to go for it. And sometimes the IT guys are, are kind of playing catch up. So with our platform in place, it gives you that visibility and then that control to kind of bring back uh, the reins a bit on some of the users. Brilliant stuff. Well, that that's all the questions I've got. Obviously, if anybody does have any more questions after the session, uh, feel free to obviously uh, drop ourselves uh, an email, either myself or uh, your account manager. Um, likewise, thanks ever so much, Giles, for the session today, really informative, and uh, we hope to run a few more sessions like this uh, moving forward on some of the other products that you uh, you touched upon. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for everyone joining. And Richard, thank you very much for your time. Not a problem. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.